Uh, in this week's video, we uh, assemble and test the Laos Laser I squared C display board. There's a couple of things that come up, came up funky along the way. I couldn't find the exact navigation switch that was specified, so we have to do a little hack to make that work. Um, and we've got to load the bootloader on there and load uh, debugging and production software. So we're going to go through kit assembly. Most of that's going to be sped up and um, the process of loading software onto it. And then we're going to test it along with the main board. Uh, one thing that's kind of annoying about the LCD board versus the main board is that they don't have the PDF of the schematics on GitHub. I tried to install KiCad. Uh, I use Mac ports on my Mac for um, all the open source stuff. And the KiCad support for uh, Mac OS sucks. So I tried to install it, didn't work out. I don't care that much. So I'm just gonna go based off the images on the website. Uh, it, it's extraordinarily simple board. It is basically just an Arduino when it comes down to it. All right, so those are the front panel switches. Um, I couldn't, I think they had it at Mouser, but the navigation switch that goes in the center here, I didn't feel like doing a separate Mouser order just for one component. So I found the closest thing I could on DigiKey, which is, um, a surface mount navigation switch and its pin spacing is was I think pretty close and the internal wiring is the same so I'm hoping I can just get this one to do the job for me, even though it's not perfect. So, that's uh, not, I don't think that one's going to work. They're wider than I thought they would be. But maybe if I fold these under, like so, I can get them to fit. Nope, it's not going to happen. I'll just have to order that separately. All right, so I couldn't figure out a way to make the navigation switch work with the pads. But thinking about it, driving and at work and everything else like that, I figured I could use these, you know, right angle pin header pins and solder them into the through hole pads and have them um, stick out to the sides like that 
and then that would give me enough extra space, or not only enough extra space, but it would give me the ability to then set this surface mount package on top of them and um, solder it on. So, might as well give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, so that seems to fit on there pretty good. I'm actually fairly happy with that. To um, increase my chances, I'm going to use some flux. Make the whole area nice and gooey. I feel like I'd better check to make sure I get which side is supposed to be up. Okay, so with the bootloader installed on um, the AVR on the display board, just need to hook up an FTDI pinout compatible serial cable and um, upload the debug firmware using Arduino. Uh, one thing that I ran into that they don't say anything about on their website is that you need to install the keypad library from the Arduino website. Um, I don't do very much with Arduino at all, so I, um, I didn't have that installed. I assume they didn't mention it because I guess a lot of, I would assume a lot of people that do Arduino would already have it. So anyways, I had to download that and install it. Um, and then it compiles and ran fine. So in the uh, Arduino I squared C display code, we just need to set the debug uh, preprocessor micro to one, and that will um, enable debug. Well, that will enable the debug features for the software. So we'll go ahead and upload that software. Okay. And it will do that squeaking until you hit a button. So, word to the wise, press a button as soon as you can. Now you'll see this, um, the first character on the bottom line, there will be a number. And so, you push the different buttons and that number should change to equal the button number you're pressing. Um, it'd be nice if they had a list of what the number should be for each of these buttons. I didn't see that because it's still entirely possible that I soldered this in upside down. And um, it'd be nice to know if, you know, two was supposed to be up versus down, and then I could, I could get it right. Another option, and if I do have it upside down, the, the more likely thing I'm going to do is just change the mapping of the rows and columns to match what it's supposed to be, rather than actually desoldering this and soldering it again the other way. So it looks like the test works just fine and uh, the LCD display module is finished. So we have one more thing to do and that's to load the production uh, code onto it and then test it with the main board. So now we've got the LCD module plugged in via this rather long ribbon cable. Um, the reason for this long ribbon cable is this is actually the amount of wire that will be required inside um, the chassis, the laser cutter chassis, to actually fit through the wiring looms that are already there. Uh, I squared C is an interesting protocol in that it uses open collector outputs. I think that's the right term. And um, the energy used to drive the, the voltage up on the data line 
is provided by these pull up resistors on the main board. And so what can happen is if you have a long wire like this, you can um, generate a lot of capacitance in the wires and um, as well as you know other effects. And if you have the high data rate on I squared C, then you can get signal corruption. So it's good to test it with the amount of wire that's actually going to be used in practice. Obviously, this doesn't have a laser turning on and off around it, and so that could be another source of problems later, but for now this is a good test. Um, so we have the test firmware on the embed, just like before. I actually didn't, didn't reprogram it. And it says Laos IO test version 1.0. So we know that at least we're getting display data coming from I squared C. And when I push different keys on the, on the uh, display board, they're red and the uh, firmware on the NXP is changing the text. So that's a good thing. Now when we open up the um, I.O. test on the, um, the embed, we can do I for I squared C test and um, the display fills with letters. So that's cool. And we can still hit buttons. And sometimes they, they show up on this Laos test program. But it seems like um, it's acting a little funny, and I'm not really sure if that's the expected behavior. I'm a little concerned that um, there's some kind of a data or a problem with with this long of a connection. But we'll know um, when this stuff gets installed. So that's actually the culmination of all of the assembly and test of the main board and the display board. Uh, next week's video will be um, tearing out the old the old controller and reinstalling this new controller into the laser. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the schematic in the end of the Laos test board so we're going to be applying what we decided upon there and it should fingers crossed go really smoothly. Uh, see you next week.